Hello there, my name is Ray, I'm with Team Steam, and today I'm out in the garden here because we're going to build some homemade drip irrigation for all these raised garden beds. Now, as you can see, I've got eight hoses in here. I bought nine, one of them is in use, just being used as a watering hose right now. I would have bought 10 if they'd have had them, but these are cheap, uh, very affordable farm and ranch hoses. So they're in 100 foot lengths. And the idea is that we will uh, install, we'll cut up this almost thousand feet of hose here by the time it's all said and done um, into advantageous size strips to go to line each garden bed exactly how we want them and then we will run them out to whatever manifold or why they go to and cut them to length there and put a hose end on them and then the other end will be kinked off and zip tied right there in place and I have a video I put out last year last fall on building these drip irrigation systems this video is going to have a lot of the same points in it as that video did but the point is to put in your own drip irrigation system the way you want it at a fraction of the cost that a lot of other drip irrigation systems would run you systems that will clog with lime within just a season or two now the first thing i need to do is plot out exactly how i want all this to run you don't want a hose to run from the the spigot out to each one of these beds we want to manifold it off in a way to use the least amount of hose as possible but still get the most volume to each bed and some other items you're going to want for a job like this is you're going to want a lot of hose ends of both male and female to uh, be able to tap into these hoses and make all of the correct connections that you need to throughout the throughout the garden so you have to pay attention if you have 5 8 hose you need to get 5 8 connectors if you have three quarter or, or half inch, you need to make sure you get the corresponding connectors. And this is after you've mapped out exactly how you want your whole scenario to run in your garden. Um, you're gonna need a few of these manifolds, maybe ones with three legs or, or I choose ones with four legs because you never can have too many really. You're gonna need however many of these you've mapped out for. You're gonna need however many Ys you've mapped out for as well before you even really get started. Now, this audio might not come out so well here today because it's breezy out, but I still want to take the camera outside and show you exactly how to lay out this uh, homemade soaker system on a, what I would consider typical four by eight bed. Okay, so we're back out here in the garden and, and as I'm going to show you here in a second, I've already done quite a bit. I'm quite a ways into this and that allows me some uh, opportunities to show you different examples of how I've handled different situations with the materials I have on hand. So. When you're working with this, and I'm not recommending a brand, this is just what we had at our local bomb guards, and it was on sale. It was only like $28 for 100 foot, 5 8 hoes. And I've used this before. I've used it for this exact application before, and I've had good luck with it. And because of, of, because of its application. If you're using it to drag around your garden and water everything every day, you know, it's probably not the best hose. If you're using it to span a big distance from your watering hole to your garden, a big distance, and it, that's all it's ever gonna do is just lay there in the grass and be that water supply, they're great for that. But if you're gonna drag it around the garden, they're a pain, they're a butt pain because they kink constantly. And they, when you go to pull them past themselves, you know, when you go to turn around and come back the way you came, sometimes it's stiff enough hose that it forms a big loop and starts taking out plants on either side of the, of the path. And it, they're just not, they're not ideal for active garden use but they're perfect for this because of their stiffness they're tough to lay out and that's that's a bit of a, a chore but once we get them laid out and i'll show you how i lay them out and then you know with drilling the holes and how all of that works i'll get to all that and so as you can see i've run just one main hose from the house over there buried it partially and it comes up in here and it feeds this manifold this manifold feeds a couple of other beds one of which isn't finished yet two of which aren't finished yet so they'll, they'll still be represented on here but the uh it also feeds this manifold which has all the rest of these you know like that one goes to that one that one goes to that one that one goes to that one i've just got them lined up in a way where you can it seems most obvious that that bed would be the furthest one here in that bed and that's the way i did these you know in each situation is different but i try and get it to where it's as intuitive as possible and as you can see here, this one's laid out okay. It needs some help right in here. But, you know, it's just got the one rock on the end. It had a couple other rocks on it, but I can only leave them on it for a short amount of time because I only had limited amount of rocks and I was trying to make time. So, but this is what they look like when you can leave them on overnight. And then when you remove the rock, they don't move. They're done, they're, they're, they're set that way. 
Sometimes the tips can still get a little bit wily, like this one here. Everything turned out good and laid out good, except for once I undid it and took the rock off of it this morning, that tip just started working its way up because that's you know just a, a tight curl and it's hard to break that action that's already in the, in the uh, rubber. But I'll show you a trick based on another project that I'll show you that I did. And because of that project, I've got the materials for this project to go ahead and nail those tips down in a, in a garden safe sort of way. So I took a piece of this, a uh, couple pieces, two pieces of this uh, hog pen panel. These came from the bottom of that other uh, pig panel. And as you can see, there are a lot tighter space in between these on this panel. Just this one was the spare, the spare odd guy out. You can tell it sat a year longer. And then when I went to do my next set of projects, I bought more panels and they were of a slightly different style. And so these come from just one single sheet and these come from just the remainder of a sheet that I had. It wasn't a full sheet. But as you can see by the style, they're, they're going to be great for like tomatoes or grapes to get a, a good grapevine started or something like that. They're going to be great for that. And then this end I left open so you can take it and basically stab it straight in the ground. And it'll stab almost more wherever you put it in the garden, especially this uh, soft garden soil. And it goes down in there far enough that, you know, it's fairly reliable. So here we have this other style that I built out of the entire panel. And you're going to have between three and four feet sticking up out of the ground by the time you get those shoved down in. And again, in, in raised bed soil, that's not going to be too difficult to do. And uh, they're about, oh, 14, 16 inches wide total. So these will work great for any number of plants. If you don't want to set up a full arch, and a lot of people don't, you know, don't feel like going that far for just trellising a few plants, then just get, get one pig panel and cut it up to the configuration that you most desire, but you can have it with the stakes at the bottom, technically, where you don't have to try and anchor it with some other sort of stick or anything else, and put them wherever you want in your garden. Well, because I built these, I'll show you what we had left over. A bunch of these. I'm not sure I haven't counted, but it's easily, you know, 10 times this many. And they're about seven, eight inches long, maybe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a hook shape in the end of them, put them in a vise, make a hook shape in the end of them, and put that hook shape over the top of the hose. All right, now I'm back in my shop. I'm over here at my vise. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we got a little pile of these we brought over and we're gonna take and turn, um, I don't know how many, 12 or more probably, into little candy cane shaped stakes that will hold the end of those hoses down. And this is roughly what they'll look like or exactly what they'll look like when they're done. Okay, so now I've got my pile of freshly made garden stakes. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them, tie this guy down. Just like that over there away from that plant a little bit and this is pretty well suited it's pretty well kind of welded into place the way it's going to be and it looks like these little garden stakes are going to work just great and again they're galvanized so they're going to last a long time so it's time to finish up this uh, rec last of the rectangle beds in this area and then this octagon bed those three beds aren't getting soaker systems because they're all potato beds and we need to continue to hill them, you know, add more dirt to them as time goes on. And, and that's just not gonna be super conducive to a soaker system. So for this round anyway, we're leaving these guys out. These ones are already done and piped in. One of those three Peterbilt beds is done and piped in. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other two done here right now. And so that's what these two uh, Peterbilt beds look like with the blocks on them. And I'll be taking the blocks off here after, after a little bit, after I think that they've solidified. And as you can see, all these beds, there's four, there's eight right here. There's another six right there, five right there. So there's eight over here and five right there that are all being controlled by these systems. Okay, so I've got my screws in place. I've got my angle picked. I want this to come out here where it's, you know, roughly eight, 10 inches from this all the way around. Okay, and there's our finished product with it all bent into place. The single stake right here at the end, the single board across it, it's all held in place. 
we could take any one of these maybe not this one but we could probably take any one of those two off and it would just stay exactly where where i left it just like that they stay exactly where you leave them so as you can see these have all laid out in here about where i'm going to want them i don't really have any complaints again these are potato beds this is how this turned out this is the corn bed still need to take these blocks off but it is time i just haven't done it yet you know as i mentioned they're they're laying right where i want them to lay and so now i'm going to one bed at a time put pressure to them and i'm going to be drilling holes in key spots all the way around and experimenting with that just those two holes because i just drilled to the underside of the hose straight across but through the very underside of it that way they're not spraying up in the air and spraying clear out here you can control how far they spray and i try to get mine to spray down at an angle about like that now what i'm using is an eighth inch drill bit so it's leaving quite a hole you might not want your hole to be that big i like mine to be that big because you can always just turn down the water pressure plus when you're doing about four of these beds at once it, it levels out the water pressure you get them all turned on at the same time then you can adjust them all each one at that connector over there at that uh, manifold over there you can get each one adjusted where it's spraying just enough they don't have to be spraying quite this hard i just have it under pressure so i can drill my initial holes and so now i'm going to go ahead and drill these around a foot or so apart all the way around and then i'll show you what that looks like now here it is under somewhat normal operating pressure we might go up a little bit from here but you can you can expect about that because we don't want to cause any erosion we don't want to be eating into the soil with a bunch of pressurized spray plus most of these beds are going to be covered with straw that really is going to work fine underneath the straw you know that's really all i want and it's going to be very efficient rather than having a bunch of spray up in the air causing things like mold or in or helping along things like mold and then also so much of it just evaporates away or blows away in the wind it's it's it, it's fairly windy here a little bit too windy to be watering overhead three to five days a week so there's that as well you're just blowing a, you're just blowing it out in the wind everywhere and we haul water everything that we put on these gardens we haul so it gets hauled and it gets put through a pump to get it up to where it's at we're not on city water this isn't done the total easy way and now i'm going to do the same thing that i just got done doing there to these beds and at this point i've got all four of these beds all segmented off by this manifold all four of them completed and all four running at the same time and what's important is all four of them are running off of just one hose so that tells me this was a bit of an experiment that tells me that i can go ahead and set a timer for whatever 15 20 25 minutes turn this on on these four beds and water these four beds all at the same time okay now here i am in the lower part of what we've been calling the lower garden and that those are the beds that i showed you before that i went ahead and installed the uh, soaker systems on uh, last year and these are the ones down here and these beds were all built at the same time but these beds never did get that treatment we were just trying it out on those beds rather than going in whole hog you know jumping in clear to our necks and just doing everything around here we we needed to see i needed to see if it was going to work or not or if any adjustments needed to be made what or what ones could be made to make it better where was our final result going to be and i wanted to do that before i really committed so that really passed the test it did really well last year and so now this year uh we're going to finish all these beds down here just finished those beds in the other one so now we're going to finish all these beds down here and get them on the soaker system as well and i had to use a different color hose but again a very cost effective hose these come in 130 foot rolls so that's kind of handy and uh so far i've just got my main line feeding this uh manifold and this manifold is going to be uh you know that lever goes to those beds this lever goes to those beds the way i like to do it i like to set it up to where you can just look and fairly intuitively see which one you're turning on and off and now i'm going to get to work putting together the other soaker systems for the other uh, beds and i'm just going to do them just like this one one at a time get one all laid out get all the holes punched get it all figured out and then move on to the next one all right now I just finished up the watering system on the lower part of that center garden and that's all the water systems i need to build on this entire property but before i show you that um, i'm going to show you it's been over a week since the last time i had the camera on in this garden i'll show you some of this growth some of these tomatoes come along really well 
we have onions everywhere we have some tomatoes that aren't doing as well as others and we have some that are doing really well it's just a normal year our lettuce has all done really well we've already harvested a bunch of lettuce and uh, we put it the more robust types of lettuce we'll put them in freezer bags and freeze them and then use them in like asian recipes and stuff over the winter time we hilled hilled our uh we put straw over and then hilled our uh, potato beds all three of them you see some of these are coming up pretty pretty darn well it was 100 yesterday and 100 today so you're seeing some leaf curl and some pitiful looking plants because we're at the tail end of two 100 degree days but even some of this big green leafy stuff still looks great and you see these beds weren't were watered i think yesterday evening and they're still holding the, the moisture And then here's this corn. Some of it's knee high right now. So it'll definitely be knee high by the 4th of July. That one right there, that one right there, those are easily knee high. Same with out here. Decent looking little patch of corn. A lot of leaf curl on some of these uh, tomato plants. Like I said, it's been 100 plus degrees for two days in a row here. Okay, I'm in the uh, center garden again What we would consider the garden closest to the house is uh, Northeast of here and there's the center one and then there's the one that we just finished building and This is the one that I installed the drip system in last year And as you can see the plants a full year later, it needs almost no maintenance Whatsoever you just reposition it according to where you've planted this year's plants or whatever comes in on its own because a lot of these lettuce varieties a lot of this stuff a lot of these onions they come in on their own we don't have to plant them anymore they just reseed and come in on their own every year but as you can see they've all responded very well even lettuce plants they've all responded very well to this year old drip system the only thing i don't really like about it is the fact that i put these manifolds right out in the middle of the path i shouldn't have done that i should have tied them up to the sides of these because that's kind of annoying stepping over that all year and this is a an old like uh hugel culture it was initially the sticks and a few logs were put down and then brush over that and then you know pine needles and um uh, leaves and and loose dirt over that and then kind of a topsoil coating over that or compost and this one this one's oh four or five years old at least and i just installed an irrigation system in it and you can see i got it turned up so this one's only going to be on this one's only going to be turned on this bed for 10 minutes because uh it's turned up enough that it doesn't sit and erode anything or flood off of it but it does its job in 10 or maybe 15 minutes. We're, we'll have to give it a few tries and see. And then over here, you can see it's a confusing looking mess is what it is. But this is a production garden. This, we, we intend to grow food here that we're going to freeze and keep year round. So it's a more of a serious deal. It's not something you're gonna see in better homes and gardens or anything like that. And so a little bit of extra hoses laying around that just makes it easier on us. That's all it is, is this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of watering that we don't have to sit, stand here and do now. And so, yeah, there's a little bit of a clutter to it, but this is the main manifold and it's set up to where like this one on the outside runs that far outside bed. It's that's a barely raised six inch bed that's out there. And then this one runs those three beds. And then this one runs those two beds and then this one splits off because it runs the far beds. It runs those two far beds, and then one of the legs runs that bed. So now, everything's set up, holes are all drilled, everything works really well. We've already, we've already practiced it all. We've already gotten uh, all the beds watered with it, and it doesn't need anything, and probably won't need anything for years and years. Well, that about does it for this irrigation building escapade. If you like this video, you should take the time to hit the like button. It's gonna help me grow my channel. And if you wanna see more of what goes on around here, you should check me out at Flash Industrial Painting at Facebook. And if you wanna see more videos like this one or domestic auto body or truck auto body or art or, or any of the many things we do around here, you might as well just take the time to hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Cause you know, we always got something going on. We'll see you guys around.